Okay? Li, lithium. It's in the first column right underneath hydrogen. All right? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the physical properties of lithium. Okay? I keep lithium stored under oil because it's very reactive with air. Lithium, first of all, is a very soft metal. It's a soft metal. I'm going to come around and show you that it's also silver and shiny. See that inside there? Not the dark gray, but the light shiny gray. Silver and shiny. See so if that? I got an air cannon and blow it on, it would it have problems? Silver and shiny. It is silver. Oh, yeah. See? Silver, shiny. Okay. Silver, shiny, metallic. Silver, shiny, metallic. Okay. Lithium. All right, so those are physical properties of lithium. Now I'm going to look at a chemical property of lithium. I'm going to see how it reacts in water. inside of this oxide. Just like rust, okay, iron rust, sodium rusts a lot faster than iron. Okay, so see it's it's silver, shiny, metallic, okay, just like lithium. And it's also soft because I just cut it with the spatula. Okay, silver, shiny, soft, metallic, just like lithium. So it's very similar to lithium. Because that's why they're in the same column together, because they have similar properties. Let's see if the reaction with water is similar. I think it makes you explode. Notice I'm not touching them. Why do you think I'm touching them with my fingers? They're deadly. They're chemicals. They're deadly. They're deadly. Well, do you have moisture in your fingers? Yes. Yes. So let's see how sodium reacts with water. Everybody ready? Cool. How would you describe that reaction? Cool. Aggressive. Bubbles and smoke. Impressive, is that what you said? Aggressive. Aggressive, good. Aggressive. It's a little bit more violent. Okay? So they have similar properties, but as we go down, we're starting to see a trend. Okay, lithium's pretty reactive. Sodium is even a little bit more reactive. Okay? Now, let's test to see, before we go on, when these metals are reacted with the water, the, the hydrogen's gone, and what we're left with 
is, or the hydrogen is released, what we're left with is an oxide of the metal. So in this one we had lithium oxide. Do you think lithium oxide is an acid or base? Acid. Base. You think acid? You think base. Let's see. Base. Okay. Now let me just dip it in the water because some people don't believe me. They think, well, it's always going to turn blue. Whoa. Let's get some cleaner water. Water is neutral. It shouldn't turn the litmus paper blue or pink. So let's make sure this water is neutral that we started with. There we go. Okay. Water is neutral. Let's go ahead and test the sodium oxide. It is also a base. Okay. So lithium oxide and sodium oxide, just like calcium and magnesium oxides, they are basic. Let's look at potassium. Potassium is right underneath sodium. Is that okay. Water? Let's see. Okay. First of all, we'll observe the physical properties. It's silver. It's shiny. It's soft. It reacts with air just like the other two. In fact, maybe a little faster even. Okay, I'll show you the shiny side. The shiny side goes away quickly. See how shiny it is? This is potassium, which is right underneath sodium. It's K. Okay, silver, shiny, soft, solid, metal. Okay. Now let's get a similar sized piece and see how it reacts with water. So you, you do you think it's going to react with water? Okay, how would you compare it to what sodium did in water? So you think it's going to be more aggressive? It might. Okay. This is more down, maybe. Everybody ready? Yeah, it is. Okay, so as we go down that column, okay, they get more and more reactive. They have similar properties, they react similarly, but as we go down they get more reactive. Let's test the oxide. Base. Okay. If I could have rubidium, we would test it and it could potentially break the beaker, right? And cesium would predictably be even more reactive than that, right? But they don't let me have those things. But you will see some video clips tomorrow in class with uh, rubidium and cesium, all right? Uh, one video clip is pretty realistic. The other one is a little extreme, and they, there's rumors that it's not real, all right? But it's still fun to watch, and it, the idea gets across. Now, so as we go down column one, they get more reactive. They're very reactive metals in column one. Let's look at calcium, which is in column two, right next to potassium. C A, all right. Now you you probably wrote down that calcium is white. Okay. However, this calcium is pretty old and oxidized. Right. Calcium is a metal. It doesn't look like a metal in this thing, but it is a metal. Okay. And you wrote down its properties yesterday. But let's see how it reacts with water. Does it react with water? Calcium. C A. You see some bubbles, so it's definitely indicating a chemical reaction is happening. Okay, how would you compare it to the chemicals in column one, though? Not as reactive. Okay, and you'll see that eventually it will all react away just like the other two, only it's not as reactive. So column one is really reactive, column two, not so much. All right, so you could write in the calcium and magnesium and beryllium, etc. That, they, that whole column is less reactive than the first column. Okay? So, so there, actually there was something on the internet where they did a whole block of, um, a whole huge block of sodium, like these huge things of sodium, they dropped them in, in a lake and they exploded like right. bombs. Yep. <laughs> now, as we go across the table, let's see like gold and silver, are they reactive? No, thank goodness, because my ring, this is white gold, it has rhodium and gold in it. If I would put this in water and it would be react, that would be bad, right? Yeah. So as we go across the metals, you'll learn tomorrow, those are the metals, things get less reactive. All right? Less reactive. However, 
but we're starting to get a pretty good reaction there. However, as you move through the nonmetals, things start getting more reactive again, and you will learn that pretty soon. Don't say that the alkali metals are the most reactive elements on the periodic table. They're the most reactive metals. They're not the most reactive of all the elements. All right? They have similar reactivity to column 17. Column 17 are nonmetals, and they're fairly reactive as well. All right? Now, let's look at sulfur. Sulfur is clear over on the other side. Okay, we've done a lot with the metals. Sulfur is S. All right, you already looked at the physical properties of sulfur, right? You did? Yeah. Okay, it's a solid. It's definitely not metallic. Okay. All right. Now, we tested the oxides of lots of metals on the other side of the table. Let's test the oxide of something that's not a metal, okay? Because you got base, 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 right? The ox all the oxides we've tested so far are bases. So let's test the oxide of sulfur. The oxide of sulfur is not a solid, okay? Like magnesium oxide, like calcium oxide, they're solids. The oxide of sulfur is a gas, all right? So if I burn sulfur, it becomes a gas, and the white smoke that you see being emitted is sulfur oxide. Try not to breathe it in. I'm going to collect the sulfur oxide in this test tube. All right, so I'm going to wait until this test tube. This test tube has a little bit of water in the bottom. Okay, so you can see the test tube is slowly filling up with the white smoke, which is the sulfur oxide. Hopefully I'm not breathing it right now. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay if you do breathe it. It just kind of gives you a sore throat. And it really does, and it smells pretty bad. Okay. I'm going to keep it in there. Okay, you see the oxide in there? You see that white smoke? Okay, I'm going to shake it up a little bit to dissolve some of that white smoke in my water. Because you can't use litmus paper to test a gas. Okay, now let's use my red litmus paper. If it's a base, what color should it turn? Blue. Blue, right? Let's test and see if sulfur oxide. Was calcium a base? Calcium oxide is a base. Yep. You want to test it? Yesterday? Here, we'll test it first. Calcium oxide? We already tested it in the lab, didn't we? Yeah. You dissolved the solid. Oops. Yeah. And I just tested it again. It's blue. All right. So I'm going to use the tweezers here, the tongs, to dip it in. Didn't change, did it? Same. Okay, let's test it with blue litmus paper. Because if it didn't change, it still could be neutral, right? Okay, let's test it with the blue litmus paper. Let's see if it changes. If it doesn't change, then sulfur oxide is neutral. If it does change, then what is it? See it? It's an acid. Sulfur oxide is an acid. In fact, sulfur oxide is one of the reasons that we have acid rain, okay? It reacts with water in the atmosphere to produce acid rain. Carbon dioxide, same thing. Nitrogen oxide, same thing. The oxides of the elements on this side of the table are typically acids, all right? So that's another pattern you've just learned. Okay, remember your periodic table of the aliens activity where you had so many properties and some of them changed as you went down, some of them changed as you went across, all right? You should, in this lab, have discovered several properties that makes the periodic table periodic. Okay, Kyle.